what? I never took a kick and I didn't learn from. So why don't we try that again, yeah? What's the damage waiver on, like, an Airbnb when you, <laughs> if you hire a place like that? Because it's really lovely. Well, that's enough of that. I am the most complete fighter in the world. The guy ain't a fighter. You can call it the art of fighting without fighting. Stick around. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate on me. Dodge this. Oh my goodness. Welcome back to Dodge This Action Movies Unleashed, episode 22. We're back after what some people are calling an accidental summer break. We didn't go far. I was I was hanging around the fringes. And now I am back. And I say I because Matthew is still. <laughs> Uh, incommunicado. He's lost. He's deserted. There's people on his trail. He will be back. He's been a very busy boy. He went on a honeymoon and during his honeymoon, he was unwilling to record a podcast about action movies, which I find absolutely unacceptable, to be honest. But I imagine his wife probably agreed with him. So it's been a roller coaster ride. We very nearly had um, another very exciting guest and Scott Adkins fan on who go, oh, he, he nearly made it. And then he also was too busy being very busy and successful, but he promises he'll be back on a future episode. I'm not going to tell you who it is. It'll be an absolute treat when, when you hear him. Thankfully, I dipped into my grab bag of good eggs who I know in real life but as you know, the podcast is recorded remotely, so it's absolutely irrelevant whether or not he's in the same town as me. But he is, and he returns for his second appearance on Dodge This, defending his title. It's it's Amsterdam resident and director extraordinaire, Joe Roberts. Hello, mate. Hello. He's here. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm delighted to have you back. Thank you so much for returning to the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's good to know I am third in line at this time. Maybe uh, you know, just a good to name the, uh, the 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 people I'm behind. But yeah, I, I'm. I know that I know the people that I'm behind, and I'm happy to be behind them. Yes, yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, in <laughs> you know, in your defence, I would say you were second in line because if Matthew is the default, so he's it's yeah, not like I'm that's I'm, true. I'm asking him. Do you want to do a podcast? Yeah, you know? yeah, Although increasingly, true. I am asking him. <laughs> do you any chance you fancy doing a podcast? And he's like, mate, I can't, I've got, I've got, I can't, I've got to go here. I've got to do this. Um, but he assures me uh, he will be back in the coming weeks. But I have pressed him. Um, actually, before I do this, I should just quickly tell you up top, even though it's obviously it's in the title and it's in the uh, episode picture. We are talking about Accident Man 2, Hitman's Holiday, starring HRH, Scott Adkins. Finally, I think it was episode two, we did one shot. That was the last, uh, that was the last full length appearance of Scott Adkins. I did mention him in Castle Falls and Section 8, but n- n- let's face it, neither of them were good enough for a whole episode. So I'm delighted that Accident Man 2 has delivered. So we'll be getting into that before that, though, just so you know that Matthew isn't uh, trapped in a well or hasn't been kidnapped. I asked him to leave one of his absolutely classic <laughs> voice messages where he gives us just a little insight into where he's been uh, and what he's been up to in in absolutely zero detail. So so please enjoy that now. Oh hi there, it's me Matthew Hoyton. Uh, normally you'd be hearing me chat to Simon, but there's so many explosions, car chases, fast fists, and high kicks where I am now. Uh, I couldn't get to the podcast. Just you know, one man army working his way through a sea of admin and other jobs so i'm just too busy to be there basically um kicking ass and doing spreadsheets um I, i'm actually doing stuff that's really exciting um i'm just trying to you know play it down so uh, everyone's not like wow his life's too exciting um i don't know if this is the sort of thing that keeps you hooked to the podcast so 
Oh my god! Action! Some absolutely classic stuff there from, from Matt Hyten, where with one hand he doesn't give a th- and with the other hand he absolutely doesn't take a th- with nothing. All we know is he's alive, and there is something that means uh, he's his schedule is is very busy. But I think we're all going to be excited when he comes back and tells us about it. Let's get into it, I would say. Um, Joe, before we head to the trailer park, it's it's been uh, almost a month since the last podcast, and it's been a, a several months since you've been here. Have you watched anything or heard anything or seen anything outside of Accident Man 2 that um, is worthy of note? I recently watched a independent sci-fi film called Vespa. Ooh, okay. Have you heard of Vespa? It's a I have Belgium... Not. A uh, sci-fi film with Eddie Marsden as the oh. Eddie Marsden, yeah, as the bad guy, uh, and it, it, it's uh, really great. I really enjoyed it. It's low budget, but it's really well done and done with a really small team. So I watched that this week. That's pretty uh, cool. A, yeah, Belgian. Yeah, and it's called Vespa. Did you um, uh, understand much of it? Since we're both based in the Netherlands. Oh, it's all in English. Oh, it's in English. No, yeah, it's oh, all in English. Okay, perfect. It's. It was. I think mostly shot in Belgium, Belgium, <laughs> but um, yeah, fantastic visuals and uh, yeah, I really recommend it. That's what. That's what I've been watching. I also watched a Netflix kind of um, uh, comedy revenge. Uh-oh. It was like it was. It was. But it was pitched as like the new Mean Girls, which got me really excited. But it wasn't. It was called Do Revenge. Is and, it good? Uh, no. <laughs> but, uh, so I watched all of it though, expecting oh, it to get better. But yeah, so uh, and uh, the bear on and um, on FX. I'm watching that. I also that's a great. I finished the bear. It's great. How far are you in? Five episodes. Okay, good stuff. Six yeah. episodes. Yeah. yeah, there is loving it. I think the penultimate episode has like a 20 minute long single take. Nice, which is. If you can, you you if you've been watching it up to then, you're like, this is you know, you know the vibe of it. It's very frenetic. Mm. There's a lot mm. of like acting, um, yeah, and it's just that done in uh, in one take, and it's in very real impressive. time, yeah, in real time, yeah, yeah. It's hard to do. Real good. I watched Bros actually the other day. Oh, what, is that good? Yeah, it was enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Billy Eichner's uh, gay rom com, I guess, is how you would pitch mm. that, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was funny, enjoyable, and exactly a rom-com. It, it wasn't, like, uh, full of surprises. It pretty much trod the path of, of rom-comery, as you would expect. And then is it up there with, like, the really good recent rom-coms of, say, uh, like Judd Apatow? kind of train wreck, stuff like that? Is it that good? Well, Apatow, d- what did produce it? Oh, so, okay. it's, it's so he's involved. in exactly that sort of realm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I enjoyed it. I'm not sure it's like one of the best rom coms of recent years, but it's obviously nice mm-hmm. that it's a rom com with a different voice. I'm a big rom com fan. Yeah, I'd love a good one. It's just they're so few and far between. And now that Netflix is just you know mm-hmm. diluting the waters by just churning these things out every week, you're like you, yeah. somebody's. It's not, who can tell what the good ones are? This guy, Sandra Bullock. If Sandra Bullock's in it, I'll watch it. I watched The Lost City. That's that's reminded me. <laughs> what did you think of that? I watched that too. I thought it was all right. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was fine. Could have been better though. Yeah, it could have been better, for sure. For sure. I thought yeah. it was going to be. I, I, yeah, it was like Sandra Bullock being her most Sandra Bullocky mm-hmm. in terms of like, she's great. I love her. She's literally, Sandy B is up there as. <laughs> I think everyone is very game, right? Like Channing. Yeah. Game. Yeah. Oh, no yeah. spoilers. Pitt. Game. Um, <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. Radcliffe uh, having a ball. Mm. Not quite the sum of its parts, I suppose, would be the. Uh, great way of putting it. Difficult to make a rom com in this day and age, let alone a sort of uh, adventurous. What would you call it? Like a like a, a modern day romancing the stone. Is that yeah, what they what were I was going exactly for? Exactly going to say. Yeah. What are they called? Kind of yeah. Adventure um, rom com. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know. Not an action movie though. I think we can no. agree. Absolutely. 
not an action movie. <laughs> There's bits of action in it. Oh, we've yeah, been were. over this, right? There okay. were, but it but wasn't before enough. the podcast. We tried to. I tried to explain <laughs> to Joe what constitutes an action movie. Brackets and one that is podcast worthy, and I, I've absolutely failed. I think. Well, you said if it's got a roundhouse in it, <laughs> that's yeah. an action. <laughs> that's it. That's true. That is straight in to the uh, to the oeuvre. <laughs> a roundhouse kick in it. You, yeah, it's a hundred percent an action movie. <laughs> so I don't know. is the Karate Kid an action movie, or is it a coming of age drama that's based around karate? We could do. We could just talk yeah. forever. <laughs> Oh. I'd love there to be like a, a Merchant Ivory movie or like one written by Julian Fellows that just has completely out of nowhere someone being roundhouse kicked. That would be great. <laughs> yes. Just over, over a dinner table, just like, and you're like, shit. Love that. Simon's like, oh, shit. And that is yeah. an action movie. Well, yeah. you could, um, have you seen um, the movie Brotherhood of the Wolf? That is a sort of period movie yeah. set in France that That's features cool. unexpected martial arts and action. And also nice. uh, uh, some kind of uh, wolf, wolfery. Very enjoyable. Unexpected martial arts is uh, one of my favourite categories. Yeah. Like we were saying, kind of unexpected Hollywood A-listers now being roped into action movies. Yes. That's, that's a, a deep vein. Of, <laughs> it is. Um, deep, rich vein. Of, it's a rich seam of content. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's like um, I saw a trailer for a movie called Ferrari. No, Lamborghini today with Frank Grillo playing the eponymous Monsieur Lamborghini. Right. And Grillo okay. is a guy who seems to just like vacillate between A list big movies and straight to video dreck with right. gleeful abandon. I don't know if he's just like, mate, I just love acting. I'm just going to do it all. Or he just. He has no concept of like equality or it's so difficult to know how the whole thing works, isn't it? Is it? So it's a biopic about the man behind Lamborghini, like a Ford and Ferrari kind of, or um, that a seems Gucci, to be what it is, Gucci yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. It seems like it's Lamborghini versus Ferrari. And I think Gabe Byrne is a uh, Miss Monsieur. <laughs> pretty sure it's not monsieur it's uh the italian version of monsieur ferrari and frank <laughs> grillo is uh mr lamborghini yeah but there's so adam driver's coming out with a film called ferrari uh -oh. where he is mr ferrari oh, or, God. or the italian version of mr ferrari so they're probably <laughs> they're just trying to get lamborghini out there so it's a bit little bit comes out sooner quicker, right finishes quicker this is your so classic um Dante's Peak volcano situation, yeah. isn't it? You see, classic yeah. Armageddon Deep Impact it keeps happening. Yeah, I'm always interested about when they find that out. What part of production right. they find that out? Yeah, it's like guys, we're making. Wait for it, Pinocchio. They're gonna love it. They're not gonna see this. What? There's another Pinocchio coming. There's a couple of Pinocchios all out of nowhere. So yeah. and I'm wondering whether they go. Should we keep keep going or do right. we stop? Or do they go, Warner's a greenlit Pinocchio, so we better greenlight our Pinocchio because, right. you know, and may the best movie um, win. May the best Pinocchio win. <laughs> may the best wooden boy win. <laughs> <laughs> or if, it, if it's just them going, right, let's do it, but do it quicker. Yeah, Hence very possibly. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? God, there's so many... There's so many deep cut movie production questions. And I suspect well, there's a few more going to creep out when we get into talking about Accident Man 2. But before that, mm -hmm. that is a lengthy uh, intro waffle. It's been a while since we've been at a pod. We've got a lot to get out of the system. And by we, I clearly mean me. <laughs> Let's have a look at some trailers. Welcome to the party, pal. All right, here we go. Trailer time. We've got three trailers to get through. The first of which is called The Ambush. This is a war, a war action thriller. We don't, we don't know if anyone's getting roundhoused in it, but I think what puts it almost squarely in the it's probably fairly exploitative action um, department is from the director of Taken. Mm. That's really all I've got. The trailer is, it looks all right, doesn't it? It's a sort of, uh, it's made in the United Arab Emirates. 
I don't know if I've seen any movies from the United Arab Emirates, no. but this one looks like a sort of uh, kinetic uh, troops are pinned down and they have to fend off baddies. Yeah. I don't know. High so, intensity. I, well. I think, is it, again, a, a type of movie where it's just a standoff? Are there, I feel like there's movies where they're just in one position and they've got to get out of it, where they're behind enemy lines or, yeah, like Black Hawk Down's not like that. but um, Yeah, but the uh, movie Behind Enemy Lines could, right. could, could count, <laughs> might count. Is, it, is, that, is it Owen Wilson in that? I feel like that's a weird... Is it Owen is Wilson? Is he Behind Enemy Lines? In Behind wow. Enemy Lines, did he, when he was, were they trying to make him an action star in that? <laughs> right. I'm going to have to type it into IMDb to, to see if my... Sometimes I can trust my brain, but sometimes I can't... I can't trust it. It is Owen Wilson. It's Owen Wilson Brilliant. and Gene Hackman. So, Oh, Gene Hackman. I right? watch, uh, miss Gene Hackman. I wish he'd <laughs> he's do gonna, He's going to watch Behind Enemy Lines now. <laughs> <laughs> I will watch anything with Gene Hackman in. Gene Hackman is my Sandy Bullock. Wow. Of, um, of, um, <laughs> So uh, with uh, Al Kameen, just reading about it, 400 yes. extras. Again, I feel like this is the RRR way of making movies. Not like, right, just make, not 400 extras, 400 member car, crew and cast. So 400 behind the camera. Well, what? that's too many behind the camera. <laughs> okay. But most of them in front of the camera. <laughs> I, I, I'm loving this new, this new kind of um, wave of just, no longer relying on CG crowds, but just getting loads of people in. I think yeah. that always looks loads better. There's a lot to but, be said for that, yeah. Well, it's the largest Arabic language feature film production made in the UAE. So there I feel like this is their breakout film. Yeah. Uh, filmed entirely there, and it's the highest grossing Emirati and Arabic language film. That's very interesting. So... And they've got Pierre Morelli or Morel in to direct mm. it. I'm, I'd love to know what that's, yeah. the, how the story of that went. How you land him? Quite a lot of money. To throw I a lot of that. money at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah. A bit yeah, of I don't know. I'm interested of. to see it. You know, it's uh, mm -hmm. obviously I'm sure there's some vague level of contentiousness around who are these soldiers? Who are they yeah. fighting for? Who are they fighting against? I feel mm -hmm. like there's a lot of... Uh, politics in there that i am 100 percent not qualified to talk about so um maybe i'll just watch the movie and see if it's good yeah as with any war film i don't think you can get away with it being also a propaganda film true by who uh, made it yeah unless you're um china in which case it's pretty most of those war films are quite aggressively propaganda although we've discussed this in the past when we talked about these movies and that also most american war films are Arguably That's American propaganda. I mean, Top Gun Maverick is basically an advert, right, for yeah. the US military. Mm -hmm. Let's let's pop the lid back on that Pandora's <laughs> a quick, box. Quick, quick. And head over to France for um, a quite unexpected but delightful to see it sequel, Lost Bullet 2, or Bal Perdu, I think. I feel like the original was called that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not reading it. I have just guessed that from uh, my rudimentary French. So checks out. Yeah, yeah Purdue means lost. Exactly, and I, I, I hope Bal is bullet. Otherwise, it's just like a like lost ball or something. Lost ball. It's just about some kids playing football in the garden, <laughs> or an undescended testicle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, lost bullet. The the first one was um, a sort of, a, I want to call it like a sleeper hit. I don't know. Obviously, it went straight to Netflix, so who really knows what qualifies or quantifies a hit? But it's I got a sequel, so it must have been successful via, uh, according to Netflix's metrics. Yeah, I can't remember the exact plot. There's a bullet, and some people have to get it back. And there's a guy who uh, drives, who soups up cars in mm -hmm. cool ways, and he's sort of like, uh, you know, not not a good guy, but not that. Uh, he's not like a real bad guy, but he's a, you know, no, no. And it was a pretty pretty solid, low budget French action movie from a few years ago. Evidently, they were like, let's have more of that, please. And in this trailer, he's made some sort of laser electric crane attachment for his car that just shoots cars in the air. 
You love to see it. I love a love a French action movie. I really put yeah. If it's French and it's yeah, I'm watching it. There's something classy as well about all French action movies. You think you know so? What I mean, yeah. yeah, I think so. There's just uh, if it was English, it would, I would it would be less cool. But they're, they're all kind of cool action movies. Do you know what I mean? You've got like. Uh, the Prophet or like La Haine. Other, although whether these meet the... Arguably you know, not the, the, an action movie. Okay. Um, uh, but maybe Leon, like Leon, you know. you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Taxi. Exactly. Yeah. District um, 13. Everything that Luke Besson cracks out of like Europa Court, basically. <laughs> all, yeah. those, all those sort of uh, like cookie cutter, but like quite all right action movies. I'm pretty sure yeah. older director of Taken has um, chunked out a couple of those for old producer Luke Besson in his time. Right. Gavros. What's Gavros? You know? Oh, Rome, Rome, Roman Gavros, who, who did the, um, who made, who's made that film uh, that we were talking about earlier. Athena. That I've now forgotten. Athena. Oh, right. Again, that's probably not action, but it feels <laughs> action-y. Um, <laughs> I've got to watch it. I've got to watch it. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to watch Lost Bullet because it's out in, it's out ne- as we record this, it's out next week. So my fingers are crossed that it is, I mean, I think it falls into the category of this podcast. Let's just hope it's an, a three star or above movie. That's also the mm-hmm. criteria for um, making, it, <laughs> making it onto the podcast. <laughs> Lost Bullet 2. I'm ready for it. I've got one more. I've got one more trailer for H4Z4RD or, or, <laughs> <laughs> or Hazard. Written in a cool way with numbers in the title, but it is not the third sequel to a movie called Hazard. It's just <laughs> it's just Hazard in a kind of I guess easily Googleable way. This um, interested me mainly because it, um, it is Belgian and it is in Belgian. Yeah, and you and I living in the Netherlands, that is you know it's this not exactly the same, but it is largely the same language. So it's quite interesting to sort of hear a native language action thriller comedy type thing yeah and i was watching it thinking oh is this one of these cool films that takes place within or the majority of the action takes place within a car Mm -hmm. again i love those kind of low budget you don't have you don't have to pay for a location if most of it's taking place within a car right like that tom tom hardy film lock yes yeah i love it when you when people use their constraints as the as, as as the selling point as like you know their strengths basically yeah but yeah again the every now and then picking up a slightly Dutch word that turns out was fl- a Flemish word yeah uh, it's like yeah. oh yeah I'm very much into this yeah I think this for definitely counts as Dutch homework like language <laughs> homework for my um for my Dutch classes if I go to see this. I should get some yeah. sort of credit. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, is the, and this is action because it's got fast cars and cars flying through the air and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it's being yeah. marketed as action, but it does look like it's sort of one of those, mm-hmm. what would you call it? It sort of puts me in mind of movies like Run Lola Run and those mm-hmm. sort of like spiky, yeah. indie, thrillery, visceral, kinetic movies where it's like oh my god there's a MacGuffin we've got to get it or they're trying yeah. to get it and then like you know slightly that I guess Guy Ritchie to some yeah. degree I don't know what how you would describe that whole world of excitable directors early works mm-hmm. I don't know this Action director movies. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it looks like it's it looks like yeah. it might be a lot of fun they've done that they've done that thing on uh to play with the YouTube algorithm or, or game it in some, and by putting action comedy thriller Fast and Furious also in the title. So they're, yeah, yeah. they're, they're, they're playing to, they're like trying to game the system and trying to aim for that market. Although yeah. if it has some of the Fast and Furious type stunts in that, that would be amazing. But I'm thinking it doesn't. But Lost Bullet no. 2, they should have put Fast and the Furious in that because that's got a car to yeah. flip in 20 feet in the air in it. As for H4Z4RD... <laughs> RD Hazard. It's called Hazard, clearly. Um, I don't know. This one it looks it looks just like a sort of interesting indie yeah. quirky movie. Some weird yeah. characters doing naughty business in a car. And like you said, very director led. And uh, the elements of, of our of our main showing 
have have fingerprints on like a you know a passionate director calling card yeah a calling card film where they've got the the time and the space to have fun with it yes yes you can cut that out as well for fuck's oh, sake sorry okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because clearly, in the accident man, they did not have neither time nor space. They were absolutely <laughs> constrained by both of those things. But nonetheless, yes. But to your point, it, I think uh, accident man is like a calling card as much as probably um, these uh, H4Z4RD. Exactly. Directors who are still trying hard. Yes. They're early enough on that they're really giving it their all and really they've thought about it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Putting in exactly. extra hours. <laughs> Sorry, all... I keep fucking it up. <laughs> There's no retakes. There's no retakes. It all <laughs> cool. goes in. Great stuff. Okay. <laughs> With that um, in mind, shall we um, head through to the main event? It's screen number one, a.k.a. my lounge and or your lounge. Don't know where you watch this. I like to assume everyone still watches things on a real TV, but it pains me that a lot of people watch this these things on laptops these days. And, you know, that's fine. That's fine. But nothing beats a TV, said the old man. <laughs> it's a feature presentation. And now, our feature presentation. Dodge this. I watched on the TV. You love to see it. All right. We made it. It's time for the main event. It's Accident Man, Hitman's Holiday, a.k.a. Accident Man 2, the sequel to the Scott Adkins passion project of, I want to say, two or three years ago. It was based on a little graphic, a graphic comic, that's what they're called, a graphic comic, which featured in um, a comic called Toxic, which was like, it didn't run for very long in the UK. And the only reason I bring this up is because I was recently um, in the UK going through a box of old shit. And I opened this box and it, I've got issue one of this comic in there. And I was like, holy shit, this is that. And I flicked through it and I found the original Accident Man um, comic in there. So that's amazing. That was, I was very excited. Um, tweeted it and Scott Adkins replied. So now we're best friends and he'll be on this podcast before you know it. If I thought about that earlier, actually, he d he's done a lot of press for this movie and mm. with a lot of, you know, YouTube channels, podcasts and vlogs. I think if I'd really angled for it, maybe, maybe he might have chatted. He might have come on and chatted. But we've missed the window. Nonetheless, we've watched the movie. Let's talk about it. Joe, before coming to this, what do you know about Adkins? A shockingly low amount. I was actually going to ask you to give me... The Idiot's Guide to Scott Ank as Scott a Scott Adkins. Do you know Scott? Great Scott, guy. Yeah. But not Scott. Let, tell me about Scott Adkins. I actually did email Scott Atkins and he was more than willing to come on the podcast and talk to me. And he was very he nearly a good here. guy. To be fair, he is he's a lovely bloke. Um, he's like that but, guy uh, that went into the BBC for a different job and ended up being live on air talking about cybersecurity or something. That's Scott Atkins on this podcast. So you um your new movie. Why have you turned the camera off, Scott? <laughs> right, well, I, uh, oh, I don't know. I've never been in a movie, actually. I'm very excited to be on the podcast. You sound different, Scott. This is your first Adkins. Is that what you're saying? Uh, this is my first Adkins, yeah. Yes. It's my first Adkins. Okay. Your first full but Adkins. My first full Adkins. Okay, my welcome. first full Adkins diet. Welcome to the Adkins diet. Yeah. Uh, so I, I didn't know what to expect because you had sent me a video. Once you told me it was Accident Man 2, I said, I have not seen Accident Man 1. It was similar for the roundup, really. That's true, I saw actually. It was yeah. Outlaws 2. I was like, I have not seen Outlaws 1. Oh, so now maybe that's your thing on the podcast. I only bring you on for a sequel when you've never seen the original. <laughs> that would be, that's a really good bit, I think. In fairness, I hadn't seen out the original the outlaws when we watched the roundup. Um, and I, th I think we, I, th I feel like I did. Okay. This one, I, yeah. uh, again, I don't think you need to have seen the original, you know, they kind of, they tell you what you need to know, but I did send you, <laughs> did send you a creepy YouTube video. Please explain. <laughs> and did you watch it even? 
Um, yeah, I watched it. Um, I, I think it, it, it's discombobulating. It was like 12 minutes long. Yeah, it is, and it's, it's suffocating to watch <laughs> and it makes you feel ill because it's one of these um, videos that um, has an automated voiceover, I would say, where someone's obviously typing in the text and they have this almost TikTok-like voice where it's uh, a man literally... Uh, speaking uh, speech to text, uh, absolutely baffling. So I did watch it. I've got a clip. I'm going to play it in so that the listeners, so that the listeners know the absolute treat. This is how you got the recap, and it's genuinely the video is ten minutes long. I have to. I'll link it in the show notes if you wanna if you wanna watch. It's. I'll say this is very detailed, but the it's written in a, such a strange way. This is what it sounds like. Today we will learn a movie about an assassin who specializes in staging assassinations into accidents. This is Mike, a professional hitman, working in an assassin organization led by Big Ray, a retired veteran assassin. Mike is the best assassin among the assassins in the guild. Although everyone has a different method of assassination, this big bearded guy was one of Mike's favorite people. His personality is quite hot-tempered, so his assassination method is also very frenzied. <coughs> It's like a stream of consciousness, consciousness from from a thirteen year old who's like been up for three days. Yeah. It's just a, a barrage of 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 audio, undercut with what seems like a film, but that's been recut or uh, yeah, every all the bits have been taken out. It's, yeah, it's very strange. That's a isn't it? fever dream of a recap. <laughs> <laughs> in fairness, it could and probably was written by a 13-year-old and put on YouTube. And fair play to the kid. Like, you know, he's got two to three. I watched it a couple of times, enjoyed it so much, and ripped that audio from it. He's got a few views off us. So, And if you do need a really in-depth synopsis of the film, because you don't have a subscription to Sight and Sound magazine where they write really long. <laughs> that was a deep cut. I didn't even expect that one. There's no other way to get a really in-depth synopsis of it. And that covers everything. That was like, oh, I had actually, I'd actually forgotten what happened in the first one. I mean, I know he's a guy, he's an assassin and he makes it look like an accident, but I forgot the whole mm. story with uh, Ray Stevenson being his sort of surrogate dad and all that sort of caper. So it's actually, it's actually quite, quite a useful recap. In the end, he let Mike go, but cut all ties with him. The film ends. I think you'd be better off watching the actual film. 100%. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> spend spend those 10 minutes that you would have watched the YouTube video, tack on another 80 and you'll have you may as well watch the whole film and then you'll get some like quite enjoyable action out of it. It's not it's not a bad movie. Um yeah. But is it very different in tone? Because it feels like just from that fever dream recap, it feels like it's different in tone. It feels more serious because when I went on to watch the sequel, it felt almost like a comedy. Yeah. Like a, an action comedy, lighthearted. And it didn't feel like, again, I, I, I'm placing a lot of info out of this um yeah, of this recap. And yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. But no, I yeah. think you, you, I think you gathered the right information from it, which was mm. that um, it it worked well as an action movie, but the uh, for me at least, I the the comedy didn't really land very well. I think it had it, it had a lot of that. Well, it was set in London, so there was a lot of like, oh fucking, here we go, lads. But you know, when it's just sort of a bit too much of that, like it's mm. not lock stock it's modern guy Ritchie, where you're like oh this sort of is like a parody of itself now you know <laughs> like yeah. uh it was that where it was sort of trying to be quite like well, geezer comedy you know we're having a fight as well but but it yeah it didn't work for me and even in some of the interviews i think that i've seen with um adkins he sort of said that that the director jesse johnson is you know very good at the action and the drama, but comedy is not necessarily his thing. And Definitely. And with action comedies, British senses of humour are really good because they can under, it's all about undercutting really. And that's what you want from, from good comedy when it comes to action. You need the dry quip at the end of it delivered in, in quite a, a, a cutting way or an undercutting way. Whereas the American action films, when it comes to comedy, 
have have gone too far really with the Marvel comedies and now it's all so smug. Whereas it's not smug when it's British in a way because it's too self deprecating or too Yeah. I, I, I think the British sense of humour and action movies go really well together and that's why it is definitely one of the strengths yeah. of um Accident Man too. I'm a tough crowd for for comedy, as I'm sure you are, as as a huge comedy fan of somebody who makes it. So I wouldn't say go into this expecting a lolathon. It's certainly not mm. why I watched it. I what well, I did. I watched it again this week as just to sort of um you know remember it for the for the podcast. And I did. There are moments when I think with the right script and direction, I think Adkins could do comedy. Uh, there's there's just. A lot of the dialogue is a bit like weirdly clunky at times. And you kind of think if that line was better, I think he could deliver it in a, in a quite dry, interesting way. And I think given the right script and character, like he, 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 he could play comedy or at least that sort of Jackie Chan level of comedy where instead of him mm. being the hard nut from the off, he is a sort of a, a guy that can fight, but doesn't want to, you know? Yeah. And I think I would quite, I had this thought today that I would quite like to see Adkins in a, oh no, I'm being forced to fight in a kind of slightly comic, like, oh, I've got, a, I've got, I've accidentally done a triple roundhouse on the guy kind of way. Oh no, he's gone through the window sort yeah. of way. <laughs> Whereas his MO is usually, I am, ve- I am a very hard man. Do not fuck yeah. with me. I'm, I'm mm. brrr, instead of like mm. being like, oh, oh God, no, don't, uh, boo, 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 you know, which is sort of Jackie Chan's stock and trade. That's the phrase I was mm-hmm. looking for. <laughs> yeah. So I think the comedy is definitely better than the first one. There's definitely like some better comedy performers around yeah. the main cast. Um, of jo- George Four Acres was, uh, yeah. I was quite surprised to see him from uh, the sketch group Daphne, who's very a very funny uh, bloke. He pops up in uh, uh, one of the lead roles, which is a yeah. quite quite the score. I'd love to I'd love to play that role in this movie, but he does it he does it great. It's, you don't have to do any fighting. You get to be punched loads by Scott Scott Adkins. It's basically it's like my Make a Wish dream and do an outrageous Maltese or Italian accent. Yeah, or what Greek that was, or yeah. sort of vaguely in that area, isn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah. I, d- yeah. I was like, yeah, sounds sounds all right. Sounds, sounds fine. <laughs> I think. I'm sure there's. Yeah, there's, I don't think I'm the one to judge it. No, most of the Mediterranean are probably horrified. Up in arms. But- it's yeah. great for us. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. you're um, you're from there, that area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think he was very funny in it. And he did I mm-hmm. think he did the best he could with an arguably underwritten character. I was like, yeah. if 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 I had a dial that turned him from from less irritating to more funny, I think I would have enjoyed that more. Because mm-hmm. there were a few glimmers where you could sort of see oh you've you've unleashed him a bit. Yeah. Um, and I would like to have seen a bit more of that. It felt like he was held back by the script. Like you say, I think for me, the weakest bit of this film was was the script and it didn't help a lot of the time. And when you feel like there were more improvised lines from him, like I think the one that put that, that sticks out for me is when he calls him a, a melted Ben Affleck. Yes. So I feel like, oh yeah, let him off the leash a little bit. Yeah, and, and I wanted more, more of that. With it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But let's face it, we're not coming in here to watch this movie for the script. Okay. I'll just uh, take off all my notes about the script. That's fine. <laughs> Sorry, did you have some more notes? <laughs> just a few. A few revisions. Fine. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, we need it. We need a good script. We need to get, we need to string together the series of action scenes in this movie. Right? Mm. And I think it does it reasonably well. It's not too cringy. There's a few sort of lighthearted moments. And I think there's some nice choices that were made, like the the comic who starts as comic relief um, and ends up sort of uh, his, I want to say, I want to say sidekick. I'm talking about Sarah Chang, who plays Wong Siu Ling, because I think her character starts out as sort of comic relief. Yeah. But also re- a really good fighter. And I think that yeah. that was quite well pitched. I mean, it is... Mm-hmm. the sort of exact character of Kato from the Pink Panther mm. movies, right? That was, yeah. 
and I, I think they would happily admit that's what that was based on, but it's quite a nice way to, A, get a fight scene in about the first five minutes of the movie, which sets mm-hmm. out the stall very, very nicely. And you're like, oh, all right, okay, here we go. Yeah. And uh, is, an, is a, I think, a, a good role for Sarah Chang, who hasn't, hasn't done loads of stuff prior to it, so I think she's a really good find uh, and mm. plays that very nicely and then gets to do a little bit more fighting a little bit later before she is sadly n- knocked out by the, the chief bad guy quite quickly <laughs> towards the end. Yeah, he's a great chief bad guy. More about him. But, yeah, I think she's a device to get the fighting in earlier because – does take a while for the fighting to properly kick in yeah the, the sort of fighting versus baddies you mean yeah the kind of the boss fights that there, there's still a fair amount of setup which i enjoyed because there's like cool devices in terms of like um again probably recapping um how the accident man actually works yes and uh, perry benson's role within that and they're kind of Again, foreshadowing of how they're killing people or will kill people. I enjoyed that. It's uh, Yeah, it was an interesting device. But it did mean that it the the action did start later because it had to uh, had to set all that stuff up. Yeah, there's quite a few uh, plates spinning for a while there, aren't there? Mm, so I think, but, yeah. you know, in terms of like shrewd movie making, quite yeah. smart to be like, Let's wang in a pretty solid fight scene up top. Do mm-hmm. a bunch of you know, get the plot mechanics going, and then in in fairness, uh, I I didn't feel like it dragged too much in in that no. that middle bit. I think it does. It sort of gets going, and then almost the entire second half, I would say third act, but I'm not. I don't know how how acty it is in that. Yeah, in that whether regard. it follows the traditional yeah. kind of yeah three act structure or hero's journey. But it's yeah. basically like the, the last 45 minutes is the sort of game of death, boss, boss yeah. fight after boss fight, isn't it, really? Loved once it. once they start lining it up and, and from the outset they're like, well, there's a group of five assassins and you're like, okay, I hope he's going <laughs> to fight them all one by one. And sure enough, <laughs> and I hope they've all got a very unique set of uh, skills, appearances and things that they do. And they absolutely do. Yeah. They, You know what you're getting going in. And it does, I think it fully delivers on that, you know. We get mm-hmm. like, uh, uh-oh, we've got this, uh, the guns one. Now we've got a sort of uh, creepy sort of a, a voodoo sword man. Oh, and then... Vampire, so, yeah. Fa- he's a, he's a vampire. He's, he's a vampire. He's slightly vampire <laughs> Um, it's not quite as on the nose as there's a killer clown for some reason, but that feels that feels like the most comic book character. <laughs> My favourite um, character, though, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, but before all of that kicks job. in, yes. again, they're on. It's a holiday. They've got to show their location. They're in Malta. It well, looks yeah. incredible. The locations are great, and they really do sell those uh, Maltese locations. I haven't been to Malta, yeah. but I'm like. I'm like, well, that is, is de- it has to be Malta, right? It's yeah. not, it's not Vancouver doubling for Malta. It's, it's, yeah. uh, it's some really nicely shot, uh, and you know, showing off. Look, we've not got a lot of time. We've only got this location for a day. Mm-hmm. Let's make it look lovely. Get that drone up. Get that yeah. 360 camera attached to the bike. Let's, you know, they really, uh, like we said, it's a, it's a calling card movie for the directors mm. as well, isn't it? It's like. Look, we haven't got a lot of money or time, but this looks this looks pretty good, right? Yeah, and even as the first fight with Sarah Chang kicks in, he walks into a really nice flat. Yeah, you production know, value you, in it from the, the production off. values. Yeah, and I'm thinking again, thinking is that an Airbnb? What's the damage waiver on like an Airbnb when you, <laughs> if you hire a place like that because it's really lovely? Yeah, I'm wondering how much you have to tell them about. What are you doing um, there? What are you doing? What are you, what are you going to be doing? Just fighting. Just a lot of fighting. Is that, is that a problem? <laughs> oh, any pets? Would you say no it's better or worse than we're going to film a porn in the Airbnb? <laughs> yeah. Which would you or, or rather or was, find out yeah. your flat has been used for? Fight A <laughs> lot been... of fighting or porn? <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, uh, it's going to be fine as long as you're not a stag do. Uh, a few heads up. Um, 
we've got a glass coffee table. Okay, we really like that. And so please, just please be careful of it. I just like the idea of this Airbnb <laughs> owner, like walking them around there, walking them around. Doing the inventory. And what are you going to be doing here? Yeah. And so, oh, we're just here for just seeing some places. So just lads, you, just yeah. a sort of romantic weekend, me and the uh, 26 crew members who are... <laughs> All wearing cargo shorts. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> a lot of you. A lot of you. It's, I mean, it does say it sleeps 30 on the Airbnb. We're going to use all the fold-outs. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, so that's... Uh, uh, it's fantastic locations. That's what kind of hit me in, in that first one. I'm like, whoa. And like you say, they shot it all in Malta. All in 22 days, right? With a little bit of light Googling. Yeah. So they packed out those 22 days. Really packed really- it out, yeah. Packing in the best of Malta. A hundred percent. And I think they do yeah. very well to like manage those locations and spread them out throughout the film because clearly mm-hmm. the, you know, the, 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 the majority of the boss fights, the, the final yeah. few boss fights all take place in, which is why I, I found this quite interesting. It's a sort of a, like a cave, like a lair. Mm-hmm. And I kind of thought, oh, well, that could just be in, you know, Essex or like that's just, that could just be a, a a cave in somewhere in the UK, but it isn't. I think that is also in in Malta for some, yeah. for presumably logistical reasons. The whole crew is already there. They're getting the mm-hmm. tax breaks. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how uh, that works. It definitely, yeah, it could be an NCP car park. Um, yes, but yes, it it's definitely not. It seems like it's too high ceilinged. Yes. <laughs> it, yeah. It, um. I, yeah, they have, would have have to film the whole thing in, in Malta with a, with that amount of time. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, that that whole last section is they don't. I don't. I can't remember why they're all underground. Oh, because that's the the place where they do. It's like his uh, Q lair, isn't it? Where he tests out the things. It's his workshop. Oh, right. So yeah, they take yeah. the guy there to hide him, but then all nice. the baddies find them there. It's a good. It's a good way to. I guess it's a very controllable environment mm-hmm. where they could be really meticulous about shooting the fights and make sure they had enough yeah. time, I guess, to get those fights. It's as close to a studio as you would want, I suppose, mm-hmm. whilst also being a location. And the brothers even talked about splitting up and and one of them would go to the Poco fight and then one of them would go somewhere else. So again... Just having a studio set up like that would right. be so handy to, yeah, to to just crack out as much action as possible in yeah. a short amount of time. And they do, and they absolutely deliver on that. I think we can agree. Mm. If in I I the idea of filming all of this in twenty two days sort of does blow my mind. Like yeah. the amount of prep that goes into it. Obviously, like all the choreography was was sort of done before, and I think they um, prevised like all the fights. So you just get there and you go, we know what this is meant to look like, but they talked about Mm -hmm. locations dropping through at the last minute and all these kind of like things that you just, I guess a filmmaking nightmares, but are this kind of stuff you just have to be prepared for at this budget level where you can't be like, okay, well then we'll just do it next week. You're like, we only, we've only got, we only got, we got it today. It has to happen. Like we've got to get out of the Airbnb tomorrow. So (laughs) This yeah. needs to be happened today. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that sort of kickball scramble of, you know, we've got some money, but we're using every single penny and we are like wringing that budget dry to make this movie look like the proverbial million dollars or the proverbial mm. five to seven million dollars. <laughs> we've been having a lot of budget talks this week. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think, uh, it's aim it's aiming for that ten million. I would push it up to ten million. I think the production values that they've, they've done brilliantly. Yeah, for, for it. I think it looks great. I think and it like looks say, definitely. It looks like more than it probably cost. I so I think they've they've a tick in that box for mm-hmm. production value. Fly a drone over a bit of Malta immediately. It looks like a Bond yeah. movie, doesn't it? You know, that's yeah. that is just um, great, great production and great planning. Film a, mm-hmm. film on a bit of a castle. Looks like Game of Thrones. Yeah. And then, you know, yes, maybe the latter 30 minutes is sort of in a cave, but that's by its budget, isn't it? You know, you can't you can't have it in a in a real like on the beach or some somewhere, somewhere mm. where you can't like clothes clothes off a square and, and that sort of thing. If you yeah. want to have like 
three really full on fights. Um, I think they've done. I think they've 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 done very well with the budget mm-hmm. and changing it up a little bit nicely. Like the the first the first sort of bad guy fight is uh, in in a sort of club, and then it's sort of a bit in a kitchen. Yeah, um, and uh, I, I don't want to get too deep into it, but um, the the lady who oh, plays that yeah. assassin is um, now in jail. And has seemingly been excised from this production. Her name is not in the credits. She's not on really? IMDb. <laughs> no, um, but I guess, I mean, a talk about like a location dropping through is a production mm, nightmare. But imagine you've made this whole movie and then mm, one of the people who's in it goes to jail for unpleasant stuff and you're like, very unpleasant stuff. Yeah, I can't just cut. That, I can't just cut ten minutes out of this film. Mm. We shot it all. What a that is a scruples nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, I did say earlier. Maybe she went to jail for her South African accent again. I'm, <laughs> there's a lot of accents that I'm going to bring up here. Now, if I can't talk about the script, I'm just going to talk about the accents. Yeah, but, she made a um, choice. She made a choice to do a South African accent. <laughs> It sounds like perhaps she's made a lot of bad choices in the last few years. <laughs> Being in this movie wasn't one of them. I think entirely yeah. in a kind of Hitler's paintings sort of way, um, mm. she's good in the movie doing the fighting. That's all I can say. In a Hitler's painting sort of way? Well, you know, like because Hitler's paintings are really great if you don't think about all the other <laughs> stuff. They? <laughs> I'm not sure Hitler's no. paintings are that good. No, I'm think I'm talking about like <laughs> removing the person from the art. Yes. The Michael Jackson kind of better example. A better Bill Cosby. And slightly and uh, yeah, and arguably closer to this example example. <laughs> Less genocide, more let's move on. Anyway, it's yes. a good fight scene. It's unfortunate that it's um retrospectively scuppered. Um one of my only minor complaints, and I think again, it, it just speaks to this budget level is the um, After Effects muzzle flashes and mm. sort of blood spray 101 in that scene in particular. Um, yeah. It feels a le- little cheap. And I know, like, you can't just have people fighting and it is nice to have, you know, the guns, fists, cars, triumvirate. And I get, like, just practical squibs and effects are just so expensive and difficult and time consuming that you just have to do it digitally these days. Um, and, uh, not to do the whole movie a disservice cause it is great, but like the, the VFX, yeah. a, a, little, a little ropey in places, unfortunately. For sure. But coming, I think that speaks to probably the Kirby brothers background as YouTube creators and, 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 probably doing everything themselves in a way as well as doing the vfx themselves which is not to say you can't do the vfx yourselves and do amazing amazing work absolutely uh yeah uh i agree that maybe going to a you know there's just not the money to go to a proper post house but it yeah we it's such in the it's in our eyeballs every day in terms of we see such great post-production and so we know when bad post-production it kind of sticks out although interestingly the bit at the end that you're talking about i think is done one of the one of the scenes that have that the corridor crew uh, yes. worked on yes the the uh the the death scene from uh from that sort of the first yeah. boss fight is very enjoyable that's that's a great bit yes they yeah. they did that. If you if you don't know who Corridor Crew are, what are you what are you doing? They're um some VFX guys from LA that make uh, wonderful YouTube videos and yeah. and one of their uh, big hitter series is called Stunt Men React, which is exactly what it says on the tin. And they've had Scott Adkins come in do that show. Somehow they've linked up and gone. Can we? Come? Or he said, do you want to do some VFX in this movie? Yeah. And there's two bits where they do. Some just like really good Mm -hmm. half practical uh, and half digital, I would say. One of them is a sort of cool shooting practical thing. And then one of them is a full digital thing. Yeah. Those are very good effects. And unfortunately, I think think that shows up the rest of the VFX. Yes, quite possibly. Yeah. Which is both annoying and I'm so delighted that Corridor got to do that. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's a shame they probably couldn't hire them to do all all the VFX on the mm-hmm. whole movie. 
like the end yeah. of the movie where they sort of have the um, actors' character screens, quite likes yeah. that. That looks like yeah. hand drawn comic books. Throughout the movie, when they sort of have the pop up screens when the characters arrive, the title they just cards. Look so cheap and I, I mean, I don't want to drag on it, but they just really looked just cheap, just cheap. <laughs> when, when the first one popped up for Freya, yeah, Dupree, yeah, I was like, oh, they're going for the Suicide Squad. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it does stick out. and uh, But I, I enjoyed it. I love a title card. I do too. And the, but those ones, I don't know why. They just rubbed me the wrong way because they just looked, I don't know, like mm. just not not great. Anyway, mm. uh, I- enough with that. The, uh, the, the, the first fight is great. Corridor crew does a fantastic job of uh, the, uh, the final move, the fat- fatality, if you will. And that is actually a part that I laughed at a lot because it's mm. uh, like a, a like a blood gag that is very funny, very funny. <laughs> Again, I think that was pra- it must have been practical. That's yes. a lot of blood to spray on someone. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. Did enjoy that a great deal. And then, and I think from there on, like it's just pretty mm. much solid fights. You know, yeah. it just goes from like that location to a quite cool Maltese location, location with the vampire uh, man. Yeah. man. That's a fun one. And then and then we end up in the sort of uh lair for the final uh for the final few bouts, I would say. And that's where mm-hmm. it, where it really they really take it up a notch. So good. The re- um not to get too far ahead, but when who comes in? Andy Long. Yes. That's he's he's the he's the boss. He's probably the boss boss man. He's right? the boss boss he man. He's also um one of the choreographers. Of yeah. this stuff, and uh, that's the next level for me. When he when was on the Jackie fight. Chan stunt team, he has got right. quite some pedigree behind him. He's he's actually born in raised in Germany, but he's we've talked about him before on the pod because mm-hmm. he choreographed the action in a couple of Indian movies um, in recent years, which have really kind of like raised the bar, I would say, for uh, in my for my preferred style of action and fighting. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, historically, in a lot of Indian movies, there's a lot of like people who aren't trained fighters and there's a lot of speed ramping and people being clotheslined and then a stuntman does a flip, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. it's like you, you can make anyone look like, a, like a, a hard nut with that. And in a few movies that he's done with a guy called Vidyat, who is an incredible martial artist, they've really sort of combined their powers and that sort of Jackie Chan stunt team style um mm. to elevate those movies and i think yeah when he arrives in this movie you're like hello yeah. who's, who's this lad and that fight but scene it, is top notch he's got the this on-screen charisma as well though like you yeah. said when he when he's when he's on screen it's like oh wow who's this guy what's he gonna do and it turns out He's gonna fight really well. <laughs> he is gonna, he's gonna fuck some shit up. That is for sure. Yeah, yeah. I would like yeah. to see him on screen more. You know, he does a lot of um, coordination stuff, but sort of right. in the wake of the uh, the lads from uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once Marshall yeah. Club, you know, who've kind of graduated mm-hmm. from choreographing stuff for YouTube, they've suddenly like, oh my goodness, they've people have seen the potential of these guys, and I think Andy Long is in that sort of place where he he's in, he moves like an absolute mofo. Um, yeah. And that final fight is a, is a doozy, to be fair. It's one of those ones where you go, whew, this yeah. is, I mean, I know Adkins has to win this, but he's, he's met his match. The choreography is far and away the strongest bit of this film. Not only the fight choreography, but the choreography with the camera and the fights and the way they film the fights and the lack of editing and the way the camera moves around the fights. Maybe there's some seamless cuts within some of the fighting itself, but... But not yeah, much, really yeah. Is, and maybe yeah. a little bit of undercranking, but again, not, mm-hmm. not it's not overt. Amount. There's no yeah. obvious jump cuts and there's no obviously sped up bits it it feels very natural and you're right they do they move the camera in the right way (laughs) it Mm -hmm. sounds it sounds ridiculous but it's clearly like you know it's directed by people who know where to put the camera to make stuff look great 
Yeah. And they're also working with people that are in great shape and can do longer takes and series mm -hmm. of moves that they can kind of roam around and just make these people look great. They don't have to cut on every hit. It's, you know, it's action movies, how they bloody well should be, mate. Yeah. And it, it's exhilarating to watch and uh, makes you think, why can't all action movies be like this? But like you say, it's down to the performers as much as it is down to the choreography and, and down to the to the to the reactions as well and, and their actions but i skipped ahead by talking about andy long but really the star of the show acting wise who i really enjoyed performance wise it, and worked well with the script was poco the clown i know he was so far out of left field in terms of like who these apparently five well-trained assassins are yeah one of them's a clown that doesn't feel any pain <laughs> fyi <laughs> fyi yeah and he's got a, a breeze block attached to a, a massive uh, piece of um scaffold yeah. so um it does yeah. feel slightly like um yeah it's a comic book movie so you're like okay so mm -hmm. what, what kind of thing we're we dealing with well we've got an assassin who's um just quite good looking one of them and we got another one who's uh I guess like a bit Asian and sort of a ninja, but not really in any large way. And then we've got mm -hmm. one who's like a sort of commando lady. Okay, not so yeah. comic booky. What else have you got? Oh, one of them is a clown. One of them is a clown with a massive sledgehammer who doesn't feel any pain. Gotcha. Yes. Nice. Yes. 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 Great. Now you we're finally back on. delivered on the comic book premise of this. <laughs> yeah. So much so that they open the film with it. They do like That's a record true. scratch opening with this clown. They've got this fantastic shot. I've watched it like three times. I don't know how they do it, where he swings the breeze block towards the camera and it has this real kind of 3D effect without it being in 3D. And they put that right at the front and they show it again. And they have a real kind of like, I love it, that kind of record scratch trope of like, you're probably wondering, oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is classic, classic Guy Ritchie, isn't it? They call him Mike the Stabs. And he seems like a nice little guy until somebody challenges him to a game of snooker. <laughs> yeah. But it's, a, yeah, it's... But you're right. He does. He does really just really good acting. Of, of yeah. a, he is terrifying and, and and sort of like menacing and creepy and weird, whilst also mm -hmm. sort of being. Uh, I assume I, I don't know if he's more a straight actor or or a martial artist or what his sort of vibe is, but um, yeah, he uh, yeah he's very good in it. Yeah, I think he yeah in a in a role that is ostensibly one scene. He does, he does sort of steal the movie, I suppose. Yeah. It must be great to do a scene and then sit down to watch the film that you've done the scene in and they put the scene in twice. <laughs> the well, same yeah. scene. Or yeah. Or just open them with it. It's it's really good acting, along with Ray Stevenson, like when he's in as well. It's like, oh, this like... This it elevates is it, elevated. It? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, he's talking about a sausage, Ray Stevenson, and he's doing it in that slightly Guy Ritchie way, but he's he's committing to it and he's doing it really well. And it's the same with Poco the Clown, who's... Um, Bo Fowler is the actor. Bo Fowler. Again, like, as with wrestling or other things like that, good action movies are more about the reactions than they are about the actions themselves. And he gives great reactions. Yeah, he absolutely does. And I don't, I, I'm sure he's probably, if he's not the stunt performer, he's doubled for, for some of it, but you're right. Mm. His, his thing, I guess, his particular set of skills is not that he's <laughs> a really great fighter. It's just that he doesn't feel any pain. So he is basically yeah. a sort of a punching bag for Scott Atkins yeah. for most of that scene. He does have a massive sort of breeze block attached to a stick hammer kind of thing and a baseball bat. So he does, he does go at it, but he really yeah. takes a pounding. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, great practical stunts as well in that scene, that again, that the corridor crew kind of stepped in for with a yes. fantastic arm break. Yes. Yeah. He gets, um, he gets another dispatched in a, a very solid way also. Um, mm. We should uh, mention Ray Stevenson because uh, when yeah. I watched the first accident man, I wasn't familiar with Ray Stevenson in between mm. the first accident man. And now Ray Stevenson has become the bloke in RRR who epitomizes the oh. British empire. <laughs> and uh oh wow 
Do you know the value of the bullet in your gun? Incredible, incredible role that he really hams hams it up and 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 kills it mm. in that. And he does in this. You're right. He does sort of. Uh, you just get bring in a good character actor to sort of bring up the. It's a production value thing in a way, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, it? In the same way as like a drone shot of Malta makes you go, "Well, this is this is yeah. like a big big movie." Old someone just doing a solid bit of character acting really sort of elevates the whole movie. Um, so it's nice. It's nice that he comes back. He gets one of my favourite moments in the film as well. By um, it's another trope. It's not. Uh, it's where he, out of anger, fires his gun into the air like they do in Point Break. I love that. <laughs> That's literally my favourite thing you can do in a film where you're like, ah! They do it in Hot Fuzz as well as a homage. Yes. But yeah, he's firing a shotgun into the air, uh, but inside. Which but I know, they, yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I love, I, I love that trope. I love I'm that. I'm so frustrated. I've got to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to shoot this gun off off camera because obviously <laughs> I can't shoot a shotgun in here. <laughs> we've uh, we've got only got the Airbnb for another few hours. I can't reach the ceiling. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's 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 great. He's really good. Uh, just commits to it, like yeah. he does in RRR, like you're saying. It's just, um, I know what this is, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this really well. Yeah, all, all credit to the, to the fella. He comes in and, mm. and he smashes it. And even um, uh, Perry Benson, who plays Finicky Fred, who I'm sort of on the fence about whether I, Same. <laughs> whether I sort of enjoyed that performance or not, or like I don't, I don't know if I've seen him in anything else. I, I think we. Yeah, you know, we, you would have you do, you, do you, this is England. Have you seen this? Is England? Oh, I have seen this is England. Yeah, yeah, he's in that. Gotcha. He's also in um, Scum, right? Uh, the the, he's the been Ray Winston. Yeah, wow. he was in Grange Hill. What? I, <laughs> I thought. Uh, I think I might have seen him in Grange Hill first. Weirdly, Whoa. and I'm on his it, IMDb. Grange Hill, 1978. It feels, and his performance in this is quite Grange Hill. In a <laughs> it's way. a little bit on the nose, isn't it? Yeah. And I don't know if that's, you know, he has been working for the, the best part of 30 years. So clearly he's doing something right. I think somewhere between his performance and the script, it's just didn't quite mm. work for me. Didn't quite come off. Also, sure. the, his sort of arrival is very like, look, he just has to, he just has to be there. Just quick, just get, get him Let's just get to the story quickly, you know. It's yeah. very much like, oh, hello, mate. What are you doing in Malta where I am, which is where we're filming this movie? <laughs> oh, I'm just here for like a really convoluted reason. Don't worry about it. I've got a love interest that doesn't seem to pay off and then uh, I get ribbed that it's all a scam and then at the end she turns up, like right at the end yeah. for the last 30 seconds she turns up. It's yeah. super weird, that, that, bit is that, super that weird, love interest bit. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that story beat could have been uh, maybe massaged into something slightly more. I think you could cut it. I just cut it. Just cut it out. He has to have a Do reason to be in Malta for some reason. <laughs> he could have been if on we holiday. Pull this thread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why is he not just on holiday? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, but some nice, yeah, some nice jokes about Maltesers and the British Bake Off early on. So yeah, they're all right, aren't if, they? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. fine. They're in there to say, yeah, this is this is British and this is this is a comedy. Yes, yes. I think it um, sets out its stall very clearly at the beginning. You know, like you say, with the with the sort of four. What do you what would you call that when you show a bit from earlier on in the movie right at the beginning? It's not yeah, foreshadowing. Flash it's forward. just a flash forward. Flash forward, yeah. isn't it? It's like this is this is what it is. Here we go. Let's, you've got this to come. We got a lot of, we've put a lot of money into making this look nice. Let's yeah. get on with it. We've got a first person like voiceover. Uh, so I'm going to be partly narrating, which yeah. again tells you what it is. Is there, <laughs> yeah, is there any, literally. is there any narration? <laughs> literally and figuratively. Yes. <laughs> is there narration in the first one? Uh, that is a great question. And I do not recall is my answer. Do not recall your honor. It does give a little bit of a, there are elements, like you were saying, I think with better materials, Scott, Scott and Scott. What's God, Scott? Got to get Scott on the line. <laughs> Scott Atkins could be really good. There's something, he, I think they're reaching for this kind of Ryan Reynolds kind of 
especially when he be, he's being punched in the face a lot and he doesn't take pain a lot. And so there's that kind of quippy kind of element to the yes. character. Yeah. Which I think needs better writing. That um, That's what I wanted to see a little bit, yeah, more of. Or, or yeah. just slightly, yeah, just slightly better written. You know, just when he's like, yeah, oh, dear, you silly old book. And I'm like, yeah. does anyone... Does anyone talk like that? He does say Burke, doesn't he? Yeah. That, that stuck out as well. But he's got the charisma for it. Absolutely, yeah. He's yeah. got the, he's, the on-screen presence. It's really just, um, yeah. But I think this is what it is. You know, for the best part of, uh, you know, 15, 20 years, people have been like, just get him. He just needs mm. the right project, which is to do a disservice to the fact that he's had a great career where he's been churning out two or three movies a year for like, you know, the mm. last 10 years. Like he's very successful and he's really carved out a niche. Um, but I suppose everyone's like, Scott Adkins should be Batman or, you know, like put him in a big budget movie. Yeah. And anytime he does pop up in a big budget movie, it's, you know, it's the sort of the henchman. Like I think he gets killed by Jason Statham in Expendables 2 and he's in one of the Bournes right. and he's in Doctor Strange. But it's never like, oh, great. He's, you know, the mm. main bad guy. It's like, yes. He's, there's mm. never quite enough for him to sort of sink his teeth into. And I think, yeah, it's it's so tough. I guess it's a tough sell, isn't it? When you're like, how do we, we got to trust you that you can do this really good script, but we haven't mm. quite seen you in something with a really good script. It's a horrible yeah. sort of vicious cycle of money and Hollywood and movies. But I think, I think the Kirby brothers do do really well with this in Absolutely. terms of like yeah. throwing loads of inventiveness at the screen as much as possible. And like you say, the choreography is kind of re the fight choreography is really, really good. Yeah. And yeah, it's really, it's, it's enjoyable. It's a romp. It goes quickly. And like you say, once <laughs> the romp. boss fights, <laughs> once the boss fights start coming, they don't, they don't stop coming. Yeah. And, uh, it delivers exactly yeah. what, you want from a Scott Adkins movie, I mm -hmm. think. And that is, that's not a bad thing. It's, ex it's exactly a good thing. It's like the exact mm -hmm. movie this podcast exists for. Cause I love this sort of movie. I love yeah. Scott Adkins. I love it when, you know, the, he, people just so, so many talented people sort of coming together and all just like nailing it, you know, like great fight choreography, sort of n these new upstart directors who are like, Oh my God, we've got a feature. Let's, absolutely smash this out of the park even though we haven't really got enough money to to do any of the things you know thank god for drones because no one's renting a helicopter it's the sort of very modern movie making and it's uh i, I think they've done the, the an absolute cracking job with a, a mm. limited budget a limited time and some really great performances and choreography from uh from all involved 100 percent. i've been waiting to talk about this for for over two weeks since it came out now so it is fully out i believe internationally wherever you rent movies do it do it a bloody rental mate spend the spend the five of your local currency or whatever the equivalent is support local talent support these mm. independent movies like adkins himself keeps saying if everyone keeps downloading undisputed there, there won't be any more undisputed so i think with this it is a. This is a, the perfect springboard to Accident Man Three. Like I think, mm. I'd be very surprised if everyone involved doesn't want to make Accident Man Three. And really, it as long as this makes the investors their money back, you would hope they would be. Uh, they'd be dead on for a threequel. One hundred percent. And it's a. Uh, I, I would watch Accident Man Three. Where are they going to go next? That's it now, isn't it? It's like the, your classic, yeah. the sequel. You go abroad. Like like in between yeah. us or yeah whatever another sequel where they go a British movie where they go abroad in the sequel I don't know Se Sex in the City two I think brought that last the time. ultimate the okay. ultimate go abroad sequel yeah yeah you've absolutely nailed that if I were to press you Joseph for your yeah. action replay moment from this movie what would it be. <laughs> It would be the moment that's shown twice in the movie. It would be Poco the Clown, and it would be the swinging of that massive breeze block on the end of a large piece of scaffold, 
and then that whole scene, does it have to be one moment? Is either Ideally, that yeah. or the point? Okay, well, you can widen it out. The point break gun, the point break <laughs> gun moment. That again, that's not very action-y. Yeah. No, that's absolutely fine, but it's very enjoyable. <laughs> what about you? There's maybe a couple. What I, I enjoyed the one moment in the first boss battle where um she pulls out one of those tiny little knives and I want yeah. I want to say that is like an homage to the raid two when they were like mm-hmm. in the kitchen she pulls out that little curved blade and yeah. I just wanted them to square up to each other like they do in the raid two to really mm-hmm. like tip of the hat uh, that was great and I yeah. would say probably just a couple of moments in the fight with Andy Long yeah where he spins around a lot or they do a couple of like really nice combo bits there's just that mm-hmm. that fight has loads of lovely little moments that uh, yeah. are intricately choreographed and so well executed and again really well shot that you just you know yeah. you see it you feel it you're like they're doing it and they're fucking good at this um that was really great I think that actually the first bit where he arrives, he does this move where he sort of flies towards Adkins and then he spins around on his knees on the floor. And then like immediately you're like, this guy's an absolute boss. He's, he's the, yeah. he is the end of, he's the end of game boss. He's going to be yeah. a tough one. And, and if, and if I, if I'd had to start like a tiny little, um, mm-hmm. it is an, it's an action movie trope about how the main boss dies. Yeah. I was going to say. That can be slightly disappointing. Mm. That could count as a little disappointing. That's yeah. all. That's all I say. Watch the movie mm-hmm. and see if you agree. But you can't argue yeah. that the what leads up to it is absolutely cracking. <laughs> Joe, we've come to the end of the podcast. I'm looking at all the things I wrote down on my um on my little notes there, and mm-hmm. I think I've covered every single one. Oh, you know what? The yeah. only thing I didn't mention, which I, which I wrote down, and it's such a stupid, pointless uh, thing to say, but you might enjoy this, is. There's a bit where they're testing out all the ga- the murder gadgets. Oh, yeah. And it's like a home video. But why yeah. is the home video shot on an Alexa? <laughs> yeah, 4K. They have that and, the, yeah. Why don't, you, like, why don't you just shoot it on an actual iPhone and put it in the movie? There must be. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I was just like, all it is is the, it just looks like the same as the movie, but with a sort of a video camera, like, a boxing effect, and then it just says yeah. record in the corner. You haven't even, it doesn't yeah. look like they've shot it on. <laughs> but they've even put in the other corner 4K, like 60 frames a second. I'm yeah. Like, All right. So you want to show that you've got some production value on your. Uh, <laughs> even his camera is really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not even shooting that. Like, make sure it puts 4K so it looks like we've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll yeah. upscale it. We'll yeah. upscale it. It should be fine. Should be fine. Anyway, absolutely pointless thing to complain about. And uh, no need, no need for that. But it's a podcast, isn't it? So you've got to be pricks. <laughs> Joe, thanks so much for um, joining us for the second time on the podcast. I'm already delighted to have you back to talk about the sequel to a movie you haven't seen again. Well, one of the trailers, right? I haven't seen the... Lost, uh, Lost Bullet 2. I haven't seen Lost Bullet. <laughs> and I uh, I will not see Lost Bullet, just in case just you do want case. to talk about Lost Bullet 2. Uh, yeah. That's, that's a gr- actually a great move. And have you seen the first you. three uh, Hazard movies that come before H4Z4RD? I have, unfortunately. Ah. Actually, there's... There's 43. It's what? actually for the 44th it's film. Hazard 44. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that is a lot. That is a very popular series. Goodness, it's That's deep. A, there's man. a deep. There's a deep lore, strangely <laughs> enough, behind uh, behind Hazard. It's actually oh, based on a Hazard set of 44. novellas from the 1970s. <laughs> Can't wait. Hey, if people want to find you on social media, um, where's the best place to sneak you out? Thank you for saying social media, because last time I gave my email address out. <laughs> You did. Did anyone get in touch? Uh, yeah, a lot of spam. <laughs> right. I think my spam went up. Yeah, that's so. Right. I think Seems they've fair. they've they've, they've scraped they're, they're scraping podcasts now yeah. for for emails. Yeah. Well, they can. People always can go back to your last appearance if they do need your email address because that is that is true. <laughs> still exists. Meantime, I tell you, you can contact me on any social media as just at I am Joe Roberts, and uh, if you do contact me, I will give you my email address. Just it's that so. easy. It's that it's easy. That easy. A couple of DMs, he'll give you his phone number. Not even a couple. I'm just, just a like. First DM. Like, and then I'll <laughs> reach out to you. <laughs> As ever, you can uh, get in touch with me and all the social medias at Simon Fielder. And um, the podcast has its own Twitter now, which is very exciting. It's dod- at Dodge This Pod. 
So if you want to engage with not me as the human, but the podcast and particular action movie nerdery or this episode, or, you know, retweet it, this is how you share it with people without having to share my um, stream of social media conscious bullshit. Uh, you can just share the pod at Dodge This Pod. Thank you so much for listening. It's been a long one, but uh, we're back with a bang. Uh, this was an absolute dudes of a movie, and I'm so glad that Atkins is still banging out the heaters, as nobody says. We'll catch you in the next episode where I cannot promise Matt Hyten will be back. <laughs> But we know he's not dead, so there's all the chance he'll come back, like uh, like the guy at the end of Die Hard or every single horror movie. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.